Hey guys, welcome to Comfy Cozy Up. So yes, we are down to the last day. Um, so I want to recommend some classes. Now some of these books are going to be easy to get. You're not going to have a problem ordering it and it comes in. Some a little bit more challenging. So I will let you know all of that as what to choose. Um, and some of them are short. So you definitely, sorry about that. Some of them are short so you definitely will be able to add them. Now, um, for me, I uh, discovered most of these books last year and very excited about that and some new to me this year so there are some books in this that I have in this stack that are going to be on my TBR that I haven't decided which one yet but these are some that are definitely going to get read at some point this month so let's start with the only nonfiction I have which is Miss uh, Wonderful Adventures of Mrs. Seacole in Many Lands and this is um, a nurse that is well known um, in um, the 1850s and she traveled, this is not her full memoir, this is her experience when she traveled to um, parts of South um, um, America and as well as parts of um, the UK and how she, her experience and things that she saw and how she saved life and how she's treasured, she's treasured in England, she's treasured in Jamaica, the things are named after her and she was a pioneer in her time, how she used certain uh, herbal medicine uh, to remedy things because there was nothing available at the time. You learn a lot about her, you also learn about her experience with Florence Nightingale. Very entertaining and also very much um, a, a walk down history because this is um, actual um, non-fiction so a lot of the tales on this are stuff you can Google and find out and research for yourself to see if those things really happen in here. Now the other two books now are this Jamaica represent uh, Trinidad Tobacco. Now this is the author I discovered last year and Lord knows I love, I laughed. It's comedy and you will definitely appreciate it. So the first one is The Housing Lock. So this is Sam Sullivan and he is a Trinidadian author that really grabbed your attention in this book from the get-go that you're going to laugh because it shows the um, the experience of a lot of Caribbean people who moved to England and the kind of treatment they experience, the housing situation, and you have this bunch of Caribbean people decide they're going to put their money together and get a house. How are they going to get a house? They don't know, but they're going to get a house. That's what, they, that's what they're going to do. Yeah, really. We're doing that now. Anyway, it was funny and the shenanigans with these characters are hilarious. I laughed so hard. I was very much entertained by this book and I shared it and I talked about it a lot so you guys know and it is short. You could definitely read this in a readathon with no issue because the writing style is very easy to, to, um, to follow and to get into. Now this year I did read The Lonely Londoners from him and this one's a little bit more, it is funny, it is funny especially in the beginning of the, um, the family. I don't know if I'm going to get through this video guys. Um, but it has more serious tale because a lot of these are um, could be wow okay <laughs> so this one is more um, serious because of the poverty level that a lot of them were going through but it still shows you how Caribbean people are very you know driven and knew how to still entertain himself still know to have fun in the midst of all of that was going on and I feel like this one is one of those books that you see that even more so get with those two then we have um, Claude McKay now Claude McKay I have all this stack now portrait book as the collection just if you're a portrait fan this is a must um, his poems are all over. They are very much in a lot of places you wouldn't expect because they are still a big part of the actual American culture as well as Jamaica. And um, he is very much um, has the highest um, um, recognition you can get for poetry in Jamaica. So I always said, pick it up. Then the other two books I feel like um, they're not based in the Caribbean, but he's heavily in a part of the Harlem Renaissance era. So I would say um, this one is Romance in Marseille. Now this one didn't get published until recently, um, but this one is one of those where it didn't have the impact that it should because of it was just recently 
release. Had this been released at the time that it was written, it would have been a, it gave them a bit more splash and things to it. Um, so um, it's a it's it's a hit or miss with a lot of people, but I feel like it's something that you should read because you get to know the author, especially if you're going through his catalog like I am. Um, I I see the difference in his writing style and what was going on, and maybe his mindset at the time as well. So yeah. And then of course this one, um, Able Petit. This one, I feel if you are Jamaican, you might find this interesting because of um, the fact that this is um, a period when um, Ethiopia was being under attack, and the, to keep them independent, um, there were these people who were trying to to um, fight. And in this, it's a bit of fiction, but actually non-fiction because Claude McKay was involved in that um, situation and there's things about this book that even a lot of if you do your research and you look at certain things you realize how much of this book is actually not fiction um, so I find this fascinating I was very much entertained it is a way much more um, understandable ending that you can really appreciate because I really love the end of this so yeah now the other two books are based of Caribbean culture um, but I haven't I've been slow reading this one guys slow reading this one uh, mainly because of font I, I'm not a big fan of the font in this but I know um, the storyline is, is getting me this is of a young girl who was um, adopted into a missionary family and left Jamaica and she's back home now back to her culture things that she you know far removed from that whole belonging situation love and all that stuff so I'm definitely going to be reading this I'm slow reading it it is going to be done because um, his writing in this is interesting when he dig into Caribbean culture versus when he's in the Harlem Renaissance uh, space that kind of deal so yeah and then this one, yeah, we're ready for Banjo soon. We've got this a mix up, mix up, and this is about um, a, a young man who uh, wants to start a band. So there's all these what we call misfits from different island, as well as um, um, I think there's a um, an African character in this as well. This is gonna be, you know, yeah, man. And then we have the other books that I haven't read it um, also, but I considering it. So this one is Barbados and this is in the cast of my skin, John George Lamming. Now this one um, is also um, one of those coming of age where you get a young boy who is in a fishing village and things are happening and misfit, miss, um, not misfit but like um, very um, observance of things and um, something's supposed to take place that's going to change. Don't know the whole gist but I'm probably going to get a little blind in this um, there are some uh, things that in this and I know it's gonna probably like stir some feels but I'm here for me this the book that took forever to get here but it finally got here yesterday guys and that is uh, a escape to an autumn pavement and it's Andrew Salsky now this is from uh, people, people tree, and that's a publication, guys. You should definitely uh, check out because they do have a lot of classic Caribbean. Because if you guys are aware, a lot of classic Caribbean is hard to find. A lot of them are out of print. Uh, if they are in print, the the edition is not great, and you're just struggling with it. So I'm gonna definitely check out their collection more because this one really got my attention. This is a Jamaican author. This was written back, um, I think it was the early 70s or something like that. Uh, no, because he died in the 70s. This was early. I can't remember the year that it said it was published. Um, but this one is about a, um, a character that is, we got it, we got it. This, oh, 1960. So this is about a character who is dealing with identity the and being among his culture with the black and white. Uh, issue of that time as well as his sexuality and his engagement in both relationship situation. I thought this was ahead of its time in terms of the Jamaican culture and the Jamaican author who would write a book like this. I want to see where she's taking it, if it's a good thing, bad thing, her views because you know it's a touchy subject um, but I think for um, those of you who want to read something that's in a queer um, area might actually be interested in this classic. Um, I am excited for this one because I really want to see her take on a character like that um, who is like 
probably identify as confused or by then we probably know what he's identified as versus back then there was no label really for that character like that kind of like Claude McCain his sexuality is known now because a lot of the um, a lot of authors during that time in that circle were what you would call bisexual but didn't label themselves they were engaged in whatever they were fluent I guess that's the word to say in their sexuality um, and so it would be interesting her take on that and where the location of the story took place because I don't think it's in Jamaica um, but um, it's a character is born in Jamaica but it, it doesn't take I don't think it takes place in Jamaica so we'll see how that goes because it's difference between they're back between when it happens in the island and when it doesn't so yeah and then the last one is the Harlem Renaissance 2 and this one uh, Eric Warren I never knew about this author but you know I'm still going through the Harlem Renaissance um, thing so this is Tropic Death and these are stories that are centered around his culture so he is from the French Guyana but he grew up in Barbados and he has um, roots as well in Panama so he talks about different areas of the Caribbean um, and influence that he, he, he used his, his experience to um, write about these characters so this would be interesting as well not sure when we get to it uh, this month but it's a possibility because it's, it's short guys it is short so yeah guys that is what I have and I'm excited let me know if you do plan on adding some classics to your TBR what classics are you going to be reading um, and also what are some of your favorite classics Caribbean classics that you want me to read because you know I'm, I'm, I'm here for the classics um, let me know um, and what also do you know of publications besides um, people is it people yeah um, that um, are known to preserve Caribbean um, um, classics because um, that's something that I am struggling with like I said and I feel that there are some great ones out there but they're just they're no longer in print for whatever reason and um, um, I'm, I really want to dig into more of that so anyway yes guys so we're gonna be starting so let me know oh what is your first book you're gonna start the Caribbean song with let me know put that in the comment and yeah I, I survive with all the distraction yeah mm -hmm. so bye guys <laughs>